I had always said that I would stop as soon as I didn't have fun on the pitch anymore. I didn't want to go and play somewhere for the money. That's what Azar said about his retirement. He officially ended his career a while ago, at the age of 32, and it's still hard to believe. It feels like just recently we marveled at the Belgian's solo runs for Chelsea and in awe of how easily he did it, shouted, wow! And now, as the feeling of confusion mixes with sadness, we bid farewell to Azar and ask ourselves, how did this happen, Eden? How did you go from being in the brightest football highlights to becoming a meme hero? How did your transfer value drop 30 times in 4 years? And how, in this time frame, did you manage to go from being one of the best players in the Premier League to possibly the worst transfer in history? The insane regression of the Belgian is one of the saddest football stories of the 21st century. As a Chelsea fan, I couldn't ignore his departure and decided to reveal the reasons behind the sharp decline of the legend of the beloved club. Today we will highlight 10 problems Azar faced that caused him to quickly cease being a top player and regress severely. The first and most well-known problem with Azar that immediately comes to mind is his excessive love for unhealthy food. To understand the scale of this, here are a few facts. One of the coaches of the Belgian national team openly stated that Azar is the biggest foodie in the team. Chelsea's second team player, Marcin Bulka, recalled the scene adding frequently in London's pizza shops. In England, the winger was so obsessed with food, he often asked his mom to bring local burgers from Belgium with his favorite sauce. Another episode occurred at the beginning of his career with the national team, when in one of the matches, Eden was so unhappy with an early substitution that, without waiting for the final whistle, he went to eat fast food to relieve stress. You are unlikely to find a photo of Azard's steel six-pack online, but there are plenty of pictures of him devouring and sometimes even advertising burgers or running on the field in a tight-fitting shirt. Of course, it's unacceptable for a professional athlete to treat his body so carelessly, and sooner or later, this should have caught up with him. But more on that later. For now, let's move on to Azard's second problem, which has been with him throughout his entire career. Laziness. Eden is not the one to kill himself in training or be the last one to leave. I'll go further, often Azar didn't train at all. These are not journalist lies, but stories from coaches and partners. His former teammate at Lille recalled that as a young guy, Azar skipped some exercises and even trained without shin guards. And the laziest of them all, Azar, was described by John Obi Mikel. He never trained, the laziest footballer I've ever seen in my life. In training, he stands there, the training starts, he stands in one place, he's like, can you pass me the ball? We are like, no, we are not passing you the ball because we've been running the whole training. But here's the question, how did a player who slacked off during training and went heavy on burgers at home in the evenings manage to grow into one of the best players in the world? The reason is simple, it's Azard's super talent which allowed him to relax so stylishly that it eventually became a problem. What made Azar special is his gift for football from childhood. One of his first coaches said that when the guys on the team juggled a maximum of 10 times, little Eden already did 500. At 16 years and 10 months, he made his debut for the first team of Lille. At 18, he was recognized as the best young player in all of League One. He received this award a year later at 19. Then, he became the MVP of the championship twice in a row without the prefix young. By the age of 20, the Belgian had established himself as the best player in one of the top five leagues. That's how talented he was. There was a revealing case in France that explains a lot about Eden's character. Before leaving for England, Azar threw a farewell party for his teammates at Lille. He putted harder than anyone, drank all night and didn't sleep at all, even though the next day he had his last game for the club against Nancy. And what do you think? Azar played in the game and scored a hat-trick. Look at how easily he outran the defenders. It was like it was his opponents who were hungover, not him. Because of such cases, Eden firmly believed he could be the best without any effort, without any additional training, without going to the gym, and without dieting. After all, what many people strive for years and work hard for? He got from nature. By the way, genes also played a role here. Azard's parents are professional footballers. 
That's why Eden didn't understand why chicken breast instead of a juicy burger if he would go out on the field and outplay everyone anyway. Why run with the ball around the cones during practice if in a match those cones would be the defenders for him? But you know what else is bad? Not only did Azar allow himself to be unprofessional, but those around him also turned a blind eye to it. He was so good in games that no one could say anything to him. He would win a man of the match and then come in with a trophy and is like, come on guys, see? And they looked at him and thought, it's just not fair that some people are blessed with such giant talent, said John Obi Mikel. Unfortunately, there was no one who would set Azar straight at the right moment and try to convey that even genius talent needs to be appreciated and developed. Although, of course, it's not certain that Eden would have listened to anyone. Once a film crew arrived at Chelsea's base and asked the most tactical players of the team juggle the ball for American football as many times as possible. Brazilian player William struggled but managed to juggle 10 times. Jorginho stopped at 5, but then it was Azard's turn. And just look at this. Life is so easy. In the end, Eden fell into the trap of self-deception. He ate and drank as much as he wanted, didn't care much about training and recovery, but his incredible talent made everything work for him. For seven years, he brought trophies to Chelsea, scored goals and provided assists. He was open in communication with the media, always smiling, teasing his teammates and giving shirts to fans. Eden became the guy at Stamford Bridge. That's why his lack of discipline was overlooked by the club. Perhaps the Belgian thought it would always be this way. But everything changed in 2019 when he moved to Madrid. That's when Azar's career, he could say, started from scratch. What Eden was not prepared for, along with high expectations, became a problem for him. Let's immediately note that Madrid and Chelsea are clubs of different levels in terms of status, scale and pressure. I say this as a Chelsea fan. In Madrid, such a disastrous season as Chelsea recently had is impossible. Everything to do is looked thoroughly under a microscope at Madrid. They only expect victories and success from you, and any mistake is perceived as an error and discussed by the media and fans in great detail. What are we talking about? Even when Ronaldo was booed at the Bernabeu for a bad game, even Ronaldo at the time the club's all-time leading scorer. And Azar came to Madrid as a replacement for Cristiano. Moreover, for an even higher fee than Ronaldo's transfer to the club, the Belgian even took Ronaldo's number 7. 50,000 people came to Azar's presentation. The expectations were enormous, fans wanted results here and now. He had to understand that it wouldn't be the same as in London. He had to prove himself again to the local fans. If you want to build a successful career at Madrid, you can skip warm-ups, joke around during training sessions, walk on the field during the games and show up on social media broadcasts with a sagging belly. But funny enough, instead of raising the bar for himself, Azar lowered it. And that was a fatal mistake because the Belgian didn't consider the new problem that naturally arose, his age. Unfortunately, the new stage of his career at Madrid began with 20-year-old bringing back a whooping 10 extra kilograms from vacation. Can you believe it? He didn't even gain that much weight at Chelsea. Azar was in such terrible shape that the newspaper AS had to photoshop Benzema's body onto his head. However, it was impossible to hide the Belgian's extra weight during training. Fans were puzzled and wrote in the comments, did we sign a fat guy for 100 million? Former Chelsea teammate Fabregas came to his defense. I'm surprised that journalists are discussing Eden's extra weight. It seems to me that these people have never followed Azar. During preseason training, Eden always looks heavy, but the season starts and he shines again like no one else. He's right, but it was different before when his metabolism was fast. In Chelsea, a young buddy helped Eden burn off the axis during training. But as he got older, his metabolism slowed down, making it harder to lose weight, and each extra kilogram increased the risk of injury. Plus, there was stress related to moving to a new league and team. It was in the summer of 2019 when Azard's laziness and love for fast food began to show. Just like another fan of relaxation, Neymar. The extra weight didn't go away even after preseason. 
and a day before his debut match, Eden got injured and was out for almost a month. At the time, it seemed like a coincidence because Azard wasn't injury prone, he missed only 21 matches due to injuries during his 7 years at Chelsea. But as we understand now, missing that first game was a serious warning sign and the beginning of all his problems. Ultimately, Azard's time at Real Madrid turned into a series of injuries. In total, he suffered 17 injuries that caused him to miss 95 games. But you know, in defense of Eden, it should be said that not only his careless attitude towards his body was the reason for this, there is a version that I could have been fewer days spent healing if not for the serious injury in the game against PSG. And this is the problem number 6. After a month-long absence, Azar played for Real Madrid for the first time in the fourth round against Levante and gradually began to regain form. In the stretch of 7 matches, he got 5 assists. He also shined in games where he wasn't even in the first 11. For example, in the match against Real Sociedad, he completed 10 successful dribbles. At that time, he was really the Azar we saw at Chelsea. Then, on November 26th, Real Madrid played against PSG. Azar was the best there too. In an hour of play, he made 4 successful dribbles and provided many key passes. His compatriot Thomas Minier, who was opposing him on the wing, suffered particularly from Azar's performance. However, in the 63rd minute, Minier didn't catch up with Azar, hit him on the leg and it was Azar who ended up injured. The diagnosis was a fractured ankle, which Azar had already injured in 2017. But if recovery was easy then, now due to his age and the factor of repeated injury, everything turned into a huge problem. Let's try to dig into it. So first, Azar was treated conservatively for several months. Unfortunately, it didn't help and the discomfort didn't go away. In March 2020, they decided on surgery, which was actually a desperate step because any surgical intervention on the ankle meant a reduction in joint mobility and career longevity. Azar was operated in the United States and a plate was installed, which was supposed to help. But the pain never went away. Due to constant discomfort, Azar had to change his running and walking style, which led to muscle injuries. Over a year and a half, the Belgian suffered about 9 such injuries. He didn't understand what was happening. He began to distrust Madrid's team doctors. In the fall of 2021, Azar turned to doctors in the national team. They decided that the plate had been installed incorrectly and it was better to remove it. However, in Madrid, they were against it because they understood that a third surgery on the ankle risked ending the player's top career. After lengthy disputes, in March 2022, Paris finally gave the go-ahead. He even personally came to support a player in the hospital, and the plate was removed. Azar saw this as the last hope to return to top form and assured fans in the summer. Madridistas, I have spent three years here with a lot of injuries and problems, but now I'm gonna give it all back to you. Unfortunately, they didn't turn out. In the starting first 16 games, Azar appeared on the field only three times, and this time it wasn't due to injuries. There weren't any. Ancelotti initially trusted the Belgian, but everyone saw that this was no longer the same Azar. There was no longer the same sharpness, speed or dribbling. Azar lost confidence and feared any collisions. Endless surgeries, examinations and visits to doctors not only undermined him physically, but also mentally. And here we came to the seventh problem. The lack of ambition and sporting anger. By nature, Azar has never been a fighter or motivator, never overcoming obstacles on the way to his goals. He entered top football by inertia simply because everything worked out. It is indicative that even when he was among the best footballers on the planet, the Belgian almost distanced himself from individual awards. After the 2018 World Cup, he said he didn't deserve the Ballon d'Or. And then he honestly admitted that the award was not his goal. I don't care about this, I just want to give my everything on the pitch. If I win, I'll be very happy. If not, it's not a problem. I'll give everything for the club and we'll see. You see, Azar was just a chill guy. Football was not a profession for him, but entertainment. He just enjoyed going out to games, taking the ball in his feet and dribbling past opponents one after another. For many years, this was his advantage. It helped him play freely and beautifully. But when difficulties began, Azar's carelessness only harmed him. In conditions of constant injuries, he needed to get angry at himself, take control, strengthen muscles. He could have sought advice from someone like Modric, who 
who thanks to his endless self-improvement at 38 years old runs about 12 kilometers per game and hardly knows what injuries are but it would have taken desire but instead of that the belgian let everything go he continued to return from vacation with extra weight and slacked off in training and he also broke down mentally under immense pressure and this is the eighth problem This is how journalist Sergio Lopez, close to Real Madrid's leadership, described Azar's condition in the summer of 2022. Eden could not fully recover after the clash with Minier. He had a couple of operations, but he constantly felt pain. This affected his mental state. At the club, they say that he didn't show it publicly, but completely closed himself off. He couldn't get back into the game, and this caused him to fall into even greater depression, while regularly suffering new injuries. The management, players and coaching staff support Azar but understand that he's unlikely to be able to return. He has too many fears, doubts and lack of confidence after so many years of torment. Unfortunately, already not in the best emotional state, Azar experienced additional stress because he was under tremendous pressure. As we mentioned earlier, Real Madrid and its fans are among the most demanding in the world. Try to guess how Madrid treated a player who cost the club 160 million euros and only scored 7 goals for them. Tormented the Belgian with quotes like, Azar looks like a former footballer. Fans compared him to another criticized figure at Bernabeu, Gareth Bale and occasionally booed Eden. The media wrote almost every week that the club did not count on the player. In his final season, Ancelotti was finally disappointed in Azar and didn't even speak to him. What's even worse, the already criticized Azar generated new reasons for hate. For example, in May 2021, after being eliminated in the Champions League semifinals, he laughed and hugged his former Chelsea teammates. Then fans immediately reminded the Belgian of his childhood photo in a Barcelona jersey, and journalists harshly criticized him. Eden has been mocking Madridism for two years. If it weren't for the pandemic, his eardrums would have been ringing from boos, just like they were with Bale. Okay, things didn't go well for Azar and Madrid from the very beginning on all sides, but would a change of teams have saved the situation? What if Azar had moved to a smaller club? Maybe everything would have been different? Would there have been less pressure and more playing time? Perhaps another coach would have found a special approach to Eden and motivated him to work on himself, but unfortunately, an alternative development of the story was impossible due to Azar's huge contract. And this is the ninth problem. In 2019, Paris gave Azar a salary of 31 million euros per year, twice as much as he had at Chelsea, making him the highest paid player in the team. Of course, at that time, Florentino was signing one of the best players in the world, and this money seemed absolutely deserved. No one could have imagined what would eventually come out of Azar's transfer, but in the end, his contract became a burden for both the club and the player. Madrid, of course, could not sell Azar because of his huge salary, although they had been trying to do so since the summer of 2021 and had put the Belgian up for transfer in every transfer window. But no club could or wanted to pay even half of the money he was receiving at Madrid to the deflated Eden. Not even Chelsea, almost a home for the player with whom negotiations were held in the summer of 2022. And of course, having thoroughly studied the hedonistic Azar, we understand that he is not a fool to give up 30 million a year just to sit on the bench. For Eden, who was already lacking in ambition and competitive spirit, easy money became a huge demotivator. And let's be honest and put ourselves in the shoes of the Belgian. If you were getting 30 million a year without putting in much effort, you probably wouldn't agree to work elsewhere for significantly less. Yes, Azar didn't get much playing time in Spain. Yes, he was pressured by the media and fans, but he didn't see the point in taking action because he felt comfortable in Madrid. He didn't like the city, the weather, he and his wife and four children settled down but a beautiful mansion. Life was good. And considering that Real sent him several hundred thousand euros to his account every week and also made him the owner of prestigious trophies, life in Spain overall seemed great so he could overlook some negatives. But even if we imagine that Eden agreed to a transfer, finding a new team would have been difficult, also because he no longer fit into modern football, which is the Belgian's 10th problem. Sadly enough, all of Azard's key traits are at odds with our time. 
He needs a free role on the field. He's not the type to work in defense. But now there are fewer teams that don't press and are willing to free a player from defensive work. Even the conservative Allegri has started playing more in football and meeting the opponent at their goal. Besides, dribbling is not as valued now, which is Azard's main skill. In terms of successful dribbles over the past decade, he's second only to Messi. And in terms of their efficiency, Azar is the best in the world by a wide margin. But the trend now is that coaches pay more attention not to the success of dribbling, but rather to how many turnovers and counterattacks it leads to. Therefore, even if Azar wanted to, he would hardly have been able to find a suitable strong club and restart his career. And partly for this reason, this is of course the least important of all reasons, he didn't succeed at Madrid, where a free roll was given to another dribbler, Vinicius, and Eden clearly lost the competition. It's unacceptable to keep two similar players on the field. In the end, Azar decided to stop torturing himself and the club and ended his football career. He still had a year left of his contract with Madrid, but the Belgian agreed to terminate it early to help Madrid unload the payroll. And he didn't even demand compensation. Apparently, he understood that over these past four years, he owed much more. Azar didn't see the point in going to Saudi Arabia for money. He had already earned everything and apparently just got tired. Football no longer brought joy to Eden, and yet we understood that this was the most important thing for him. He played for joy. Guys, that's it. The video is a bit sad and even slightly negative. It's understandable, after all, we've talked about the problems and reasons for Azar's failure. But I really want Eden to remain in our memory, not as a loser whose career went downhill at Real Madrid, but as a special player who created magic in the best league in the world for seven years. So in the end, let's remember a few moments of his brilliance. For example, the crazy solo run against West Ham when Azar came flying into the penalty area at high speed, dribbling past five players. By the way, during his time in the English Premier League, he had no competition in terms of dribbles and fouls earned. And here's another slalom run by Eden in the match against Liverpool. Four opponents left behind, a precise shot into the bottom corner. Enjoy! It's not the only time that the Reds had to suffer from the winger's runs. Liverpool was one of his favorite opponents. He scored against them more than any other club, along with four other teams. Among them was Arsenal. Eden always went into the beast mode in top games. Look at one of his most famous goals. What amazes me the most here is how Coquelin flies off after Eden's dribble. Total humiliation. And lastly, I'll quote Sunderland coach Gustavo Payet in whose goal Eden put in his next masterpiece. No other player played so powerfully against any of my teams. We tried everything but still couldn't handle him. We tried marking him, using double coverage and other tactics, but it's just impossible to play against him. I suggest remembering Azar exactly like this, a player who is simply impossible to defend against. Thank you, Eden, for a bunch of beautiful highlights and unique dribbling and your magic. We won't forget that. See you soon. Know the ball.